Hi, YouTube fam. I am Angeline, the nursing assistant. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're looking at this video. I just want to say happy Friday to you guys. And yes, we have made it to a uh, through another week. This is Informative Friday. Come on, let's get into it. These are tips and things that a new nursing assistant needs to, need to know to make their job much easier. They're small, but they make a big, big difference. First, I will tell you guys, never be afraid to ask questions. I know when I first started uh, my nursing assistant career journey, when I, my first job, a lot of things I didn't know, I was afraid or intimidated to ask, to even let them know that I didn't know how to do that. But this is your first job. This is your first job out of training. You're not going to know everything. So my first tip is do not be afraid to ask questions. Number two, before you start giving patient care, double glove. Put two gloves on each hand, which is a total of four. And the reason you do this, sometimes your glove do break and your hand is exposed. So if you already have two gloves on, you got that extra protection. And also, sometime in doing care, you may get stool on your glove if you're uh, changing an incontinent patient, and you can easily remove the first pair of gloves and you still have on a set of gloves. So it's a small tip but it's a good tip and it would definitely make your job much smoother. And also, uh, being a nursing assistant, you have to have good time management. So this also, uh, save time in you going to wash your hand, putting on another pair of gloves. So when doing patient care, just start off double gloving. It will help you out. A whole lot. Number three, while doing patient care or making the bed, you're turning the patient back and forth. And if you would, if a patient cannot pull himself or herself up in the bed, uh, when you finish, sometimes the patient is low in the bed and need to be pulled up. While doing care for the patient, if you would lay the head flat and elevate that foot, the foot of the bed, while doing care, turning the patient back and forth, the patient, the elevation will automatically make the patient go up in the bed. Therefore, when you get through doing care for this patient, you would not have to try to pull him up. And in some cases, you cannot pull him up by yourself. You would have to go out and find somebody to come and help you get the patient up in the bed. So by elevating the foot, lowering the head, the patient will automatically rise up to the top. That's tip number three. Tip Number four, if you are turning a patient that cannot turn, when you turn the patient to make it more easier for you, you will grab the draw sheet and turn the patient. Do not try to uh, turn the patient by actually pushing the patient with your hand, the shoulder, and pushing the patient over. 
grab the sh let the draw sheet do the work for you. That's what it's there for. You grab the draw sheet and push the patient over. I will uh, insert an illustration of that. Also, while turning the patient over, if you would just get their legs, one of their legs, and just put it, help it go over, it will also make the turn much smoother. That is tip number four. Here I'm just illustrating how you would use a draw sheet to turn a patient. Not much to say, self-explanatory. I just wanted to give you guys a visual. And that's it. All comfy. Tip number five. A lot of people um, don't really know how to put on a diaper so the placement will be correct. So when they urinate or have a bowel movement, it'll go where it need to go inside the diaper. So the first tip I would say is right where the white of the diaper start place that even with the butter uh, uh, crack. Right at the beginning, you put that white part right there. And that gonna place that diaper in the right spot as far as uh, it's not too high up or too low. Secondly, when you are putting on the diaper, if they are in the bed, you can actually, once you get your diaper placed where you think it should go, you can raise that diaper up and see, is it going to cover the butter cheek? I will also insert an illustration showing you exactly what I'm talking about. That is tip number five. Right here, guys, this is the diaper that I was speaking about. You will just line up the crack of your butt with that white line. So you will place that at the beginning. And once it is placed at the beginning, you can check to make sure that the placement is correct to make sure that it cover all the butt cheeks. Once it's in the right spot and the placement is okay, you would then proceed to put on the diaper or brief. And that's it, you guys. All done. Tip number six. When uh, you are passing out trays, some of the patient may be feeders. So the feeders trays come out last. You pass out the ones that can feed their self. You may have to set them up. And, and what I mean about setting them up, you may have to, you know, open their milk or put a straw in their milk or put some butter on their bread. But actually they, they are actually able to feed themselves. So the patient that cannot feed themselves, trays goes out last. And if you have two patients that you need to feed, you will leave the tray that the patient that you're not feeding, leave, that, leave the tray on the cart and take the ones that you're going to actually feed out and feed that patient. So feeders are last. Do not take their trays out first. I made that mistake when I first started out. I got a feeder and just started feeding that patient because sometimes feeders eat very slow. So while I'm feeding that patient, my other trays was on the cart 
and the ones that could feed themselves did not have their food. So it threw everything off. So make sure you pass out the trays that the people can feed themselves first and then the feeders. That was tip number six. Tip number seven. Don't be afraid to ask for help because you will need at some point an extra hand. When you're using the hard you lift, the stand up lift, uh, those kind, the uh, shower bed, those kind of equipment require a two person assist. So please don't be afraid to ask for help. And sometimes you got you have to be firm. You have to be firm in uh, asking a nurse or another uh, a nursing assistant for help, but do not do it by yourself. You got to think of the patient safety and that is always first. Yes, that'll be tip number eight. Always think of the patient safety because that is number one. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes you have to be firm because you are going to run into sometimes people not wanting to uh, help you. But just be firm and ask for help. Tip number nine. The final tip that I have for you guys today. You are an advocate for your patient. You are around your patient more than any other person in the building. More than the nurse. More than the doctor. More than physical therapist. More than the social worker. You around the patient more than anyone. So in saying that, you have to be very observant as far as a change in your patient. With you being around your patient every day, you gonna know you're gonna probably be the first one that notice a change. It can be a small change, but a small change can make a world of difference in the patient help, finding the patient diagnosis. So please be observant because you as an advocate for that particular patient, once you find out something, you go tell the nurse and the nurse will take it on from there. So that's it, you guys, for this informative Friday. I hope that help you starting out your journey being a nursing assistant these are just a few tips that will help you do your job better, make your job go a little smoother. I will be doing every now and then different tips for a new nursing assistant that will make your job, your life much easier. So you guys, if you would subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss not one of my videos. Not one. Come on. Come on. Let's get it started.